Okay, what is going on guys? We're going to play some automation today and we're going to make ourselves a minivan. Which I said I'd never ever ever do, but we're going to do it anyway. So, we're going to do a new model. And see, I've, I've seen the things in here to do it. The body styles that would do minivans. I just got to find it. That's a full size, there we go, people mover. That's just a fan, that's people mover. Alright, so we're going with a 2002 body style, kind of low slung. I kind of get a Dodge Caravan vibe off of that right now, but we'll play with it for a while. Alright, so we're going to go, we have to determine which ones of these we want to do here. Let's do corrosion resistant steel. We'll do uh, monocoque, which is basically a unit body. Let's see here. I could do corrosion, I could do light steel. Glued aluminum, that's different. Or galvanized steel. Yeah, we'll do galvanized steel. I'm going to do, let's do, uh, transverse mount. It's going to be front wheel drive. We're going to do. Oh, it does change how it looks a little bit there. Oh, that's pretty slick. Glued aluminum. Not sure. Oh, do you can see the glue marks on it. Oh, sweet. I learn something about this game every day. Yeah, it's got that galvanized steel look to it. I don't know if that's actually going to work for me or not. We'll just do corrosion resistant steel. Alright, so we'll do that. And we'll do... McPherson strut, which is a lower control arm, an A arm. Kind of, sort of, maybe. And a strut tower brace. And somehow this is defaulting to a double wishbone, but we're going to do. We're going to do semi trailing arm. And that should be it for that. Alright, so now we got to throw an engine on this thing. Oh, yeah, let's name it. Soccer bus. I don't know, we're just gonna throw some minutes. So I'm thinking I'm gonna throw in an engine I already have built. Maybe we'll, we'll mess with it. So let's do a 60 degree V6, a 3400, 3.4 liters. And then that's it, it's done. Don't have to worry about it anymore. All right, definitely gonna go uh, reverse markers there and stuff. All right, so let's let's do white. Eh. Let's make it all white. Really? Secondary by make that white too. What the tra? Really? That's kind of weird. All car slots. That is kind of bizarre. Okay, so let's make the trim white. Oh, okay. I can make the trim plastic. It's weird how it has. Uh... All right, so that'll work. That, that's that's enough. We'll make it white. I could just make it yellow. Yeah, let's do stinking yellow. Let's do baby crap yellow. That's exactly why I named that one. So that's kind of a brown look. Well, we'll go for that. And the rims can just stay the, the way they are. Not a big deal. Alright, so we have to throw some lights on this thing. Let's do this. And we'll bigify that a little bit, stretch that, and eh, now. Actually, we'll. I want the headlights to be actually like, you know, squarish. How's that look? It looks nice and big, and you can. Totally see well with that. And I'll put a grill right here. I got a grill that has a kind of a... has the right shape for it. This might work. We'll bigify that and it should fit in there just perfect. Alright, that's the front. I mean, there's more to it. I mean, I have like all this space down here that's boring and 
featureless and has nothing going on, so we're going to throw on some fog lights. That looks a little weird, so how about we go like this. And now it's going to say, oh, you wanted to move that? Like, no, I didn't want to move you. I think there's a way to lock these things so they don't move after you place them, but I forget how to do it, so I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, we're going to put... Let me see, that should go there like that. Yeah, if you click on it, you can move it again, but I'm like, I really don't want to touch them after that. And we'll slide you yeah, a little bit that away. I'm thinking I'll put a little grill there. And I got space for the license plate, which will go right here. Which I will go ahead and pick the automation plate. Okay, so that's the front. Ah, uh, these headlights really aren't doing it for me. Maybe it's the fact that the, the, there, that's a little bit better, a little bit. Uh, it kind of trim kind of shaves off a little bit there. Cannot be helped. Nope, I'll do. I'm really not sure if I have turn indicators on this or not. It doesn't look like I do. Which is kind of bizarre. So I really don't have... I really don't have uh, markers on this. So we say we put some markers on this car. I'll put them right here. No, I think that can go away. I don't need that. But it needs to be something here. It's kind of just featureless and bland right now. Maybe we'll do, uh... Oh, there you go. Almost like lines up with the, um... Yep. There. Not that this is the important part of designing the car. This is not the important part at all. I'm just... It just has to have the right look to it. Otherwise, it looks kind of stupid. Alright, so we're gonna flip you like this. Yeah, we'll go like that. And then we can go like this. And the turn signals are visible from the side, that's important. So you can see it from various angles. Hey, it looks like I can actually put a stop mount cluster up that away. So I do my old basic generic favorite, which is doing these guys. These will double as turn signals too, unless I change this, which I actually will. There, they're just stop bounce now, stop lights now. I'm actually wondering if this is enough uh, brake light or backup light. I don't think it is, so we're gonna add some backup lights, and we can do that by going like this. We'll just place those for now, like that. We'll do another license plate. And then we can make these a little smaller. And then we can flip them. Okay, so those are our backup lights there in the center. Well, it's not going to win any awards for being a pretty car. That's okay. I need gas cap. We'll go around. Driver's side is always kind of a thing I always do because I'm used to that. I've had one car that had it on the passenger side and I was like, dude, what in the world is wrong? We'll put a latch and then we'll put a key.
Hope we only want one of them. Little offset a little bit there. And now we need some door handles. So I go for these guys. These are kind of like my go-to for door handles. Actually, I'm not sure if this is a door door or one of the slidey bits. I don't see the track parts. Um, you know what? It's, we're going to go ahead and... We're going to go like that. We're going to shrink that a little bit. There. Because I'm guessing those are the doors that... Um, they, they slide back on the track, so they don't really see the tracks on here. Maybe they don't have that. I don't know. Hood's kind of featureless, but that's okay. And I need a um, antenna. I'll go for this car right here. Put it right there by the... We'll push it a little bit forward. So it clears the hatch when it opens up. All right, now rims, we're just gonna go for those basic generic boring rims. Nothing really fancy. All right, we need mirrors. I gotta mount them on the door, huh? Okay. Those are like really flimsy looking mirrors. I mean, they're like stocks. Those don't look durable enough to handle up to any sort of abuse. These might work. Oh yeah, we'll go like this. Pickify that like that. Kind of ugly. Kind of featureless on the side here. But we can add trim pieces. We can go like this and we can add trim to it. We can add some bits of chrome here, kind of jazz it up some, and then I can hold down shift and I can just drag it over. I just figured this trick out not long ago actually, I was like, oh well, I can actually drag trim pieces around. Makes my life so much easier trying to do this. Oh wait, heck no! <laughs> you don't work! Get out of here! Get that mess out of here. Yeah, nope, you don't work. I need something that's just a piece of trim. Can I make you big enough? A little bit of... Uh, chrome action here. Just a little bit, a hint of it. Now trying to get this lined up is difficult. Some vehicles have, um, like, trim pieces already come with the car. Oops. Nope. I want, uh, you. Are you going to actually, like, mold to the car? This is where it's going to get stupid interesting. And my trim job's gonna suck. It's gonna look all sorts of wonky and weird. I don't know why I'm bothering, but uh... And we'll do another piece right back here for this back fender. Oh, tell me I had this centered. Oh, it wasn't even mirrored. <laughs> I'd be like, oh no, it's only on one side. Okay, so now I can go like this. Drag you over there. You can kind of click on bits of the car to recenter your, your view a little bit on whatever it is you're working on. It's a little wonky, but it, it, it works. And then you can go here and say reset it to the camera. Okay, that's, um, at least it's straight. <laughs> I thought much more than that, but um, yeah, it looks very recognizable as a stinking minivan. Yay. Oh, I didn't save my... Uh, my name. I'm back. I can't stink and type today, but there it is.
All right, next. So we want a front wheel drive transverse. We want an automatic. We'll do five speed. Uh, let's go ahead and put our top speed a little bit higher than what it estimates it to be at. And then we're gonna raise this so my fourth gear is one to one. Looks like that's gonna do it. So limited slip, yep. Radial, long life compound. Let's go ahead and give it 220s. Uh, 17 inch rims, yep. And we'll go with just regular steel rims. These 29 inch tires. Oh sure, let's go 29.9, give them some padding. Okay, so we're gonna do solid disc brake, two piston. We're gonna go solid disc with a single piston in the rear. So front is getting more work done to it. No under tray, none of the other fun stuff. Oh, I gotta put some people in here. So we're gonna do seven seats. So two, two, three. I mean, you could, if you wanted to, you could put nine, but good luck trying to get people in and out. So you gotta be able to squeeze past the back here and stuff. So let's do a premium interior. Let's do a premium satellite navigation system. We're gonna do hydraulics, power steering, and a lock brakes. Let's do advanced 2000 safety features. They don't tell you what that all is, but you just have to figure it out. So our hydro pneumatic twin tube, let's do uh, passive sway bars, let's do normal. So my cornering sucks. Hey, I got family premium Look at my miles per gallon holy crap why <laughs> I might have to swap out that engine with something a little more beans to it because that's pretty bad all right so now I got a bunch of stuff here which is messed up so this is my brakes suck well no problem we can fix that you can see here this is how much I guess grip that my tires have and this is how much brake force I have so as you can see I have plenty of traction and my 62 to 0 mile per hour time is or space is is pretty abysmal let's do three piston that didn't really do much for me handling tends towards understeer consider adding front grip all right well let's go Did that make it go away Car is underpowered for our engines underpowered for its weight. All right, so we got to pick a vehicle, or pick an engine that um, makes more power. So I got to find something here that I've built that actually will fit the car. Oh, it goes 38. We can go for um, let's go for a Buick 90 degree V6. How's that? Engines underpowered, and I lost miles per gallon. Well, beans. Let me see. Well, how's oh, this? I could actually modify this one if I wanted to. So it's 200 horsepower, 185 foot pounds of torque. It still says it sucks. Maybe I should have just left the engine alone and built one. All right, so here we go. Let's build. Let's do a high-value V6 from GM. This is a, the biggest that they make right now. Uh, this should do it. Really? Why does this one make so much more power and it's naturally aspirated? There we go. Wow, look at that miles per gallon rating. I'm getting 21 now. Wheel spin, short gearing. All right, so what did I just do? Here's my material costs. So it cost me fifteen thousand dollars to make this car, which means we'll probably sell it for close to thirty. So we can increase our top speed here. And yep, the gearing is all better. Car's handling. Okay, so I got to add more front tire. 
Well, I can't add any more front tire. I mean, I could decide, hey, let's just go ahead and get a slightly better low sport in this penalty. How's that? I can't make the tires any bigger. I can if I do this. I can push the tires out a little bit by making, basically sculpting the body, it allow me to put chunkier tires on it. All right, so let's go ahead and save it while we're at it here. All right, see that fixed it. So let's do, let's do 230s. Nope, I liked it uh, there. What? It was fine. 240. Not bad. 22.1 miles per gallon. All right, so we're almost done here. All right, so we're on normal. Now, let's look at the ride height. How does that ride height look like? That should improve my sportiness, which I don't have a sportiness value. Off-road premium? What? Okay, so... Not bad. Safety rating's really good. Prestige value is kind of like, okay, whatever. Comfort value is pretty good. Drivability is pretty good. Uh, how's my brakes? Under sportiness, I'm going to suffer from brake fade, so I can actually raise my brake power in the front. Brake fade, huh? Alright, so now we can go aerodynamics. And I can improve airflow to brakes. This will improve how they last. Alright. I guess. <laughs> that was always kind of a weird one to do, but I shouldn't be driving this really superly, sprinterly craziness here, so... Alright, 13... Less than $14,000 to make the car. Weighs quite a bit. It'd be nice if I get that down some, but, uh, yeah. Alright, so let's see what the markets are like. So this is in, um... This is in Gasmia. Convertible. What? So premium. So it's affordable. Offered premium. I don't know why. <laughs> why is offered premium a thing? Utility, sport, family utility, commuter, family premium, city premium. Alright, that's here in Gasmia. Ferenia. Well, they actually like a car. Ferenia hates everything that I do, but they like this. This country hates everything. I don't know why. I don't know what their deal is. No idea why they hate everything that I do. These people got money, so they like faster cars. These people got tons of money, so they're like, yeah, we love your car. See, I got best in class, basically, in a bunch of categories. I didn't get... I Actually, I did get... I don't know why Alford Premium. Like, seriously... About 22 miles per gallon, so try not to rump on the gas a bunch. Low sportiness rating. Why? Circle test. Oh, because my stinking... Yeah, not very good. Alright, so let's take it to the test track and actually see how it does. We'll hit save first, just because. Oh yeah, 7.34G skid test. Here, the tires all squealing away. Oh, I could tow a lot with this thing. This one's a bank turn here, the Coswell's Carousel. Oh, 
I like how the little icon looks nothing like what it is that you're dealing with either. A lot of road noise or wind noise. And there's this evil chicane here, it'll be fun. I have gotten a car to complete this entire circuit within two minutes. We're going to be over two and a half minutes at this one. Now it doesn't tell you during this testing experience what sort of issues the car had, like uh, handling or brakes, that kind of thing. All right, so that's that. Oh, where'd you go? Where the heck? I like it with like everything just kind of disappears. Alright, so we're going to export this to Beam so I can drive it later. That'll be fun. Yep, didn't even have to do much to load. It's just like, yep, I'm done. <laughs> and this junky brownish color. <laughs> My parents had a brown minivan. I think, I think mine actually looks a little bit better than what they had. It had the fake wood trim on the side and everything. It was like really silly. All right, so let's take a look at by a hell car, which is called Christine. No offense to anyone who watches this who's named Christine. I just got the idea from watching the movie, and I have all sorts of crazy. Oh, look how much this thing costs to make. Yeah, half a million dollars to make this car. So let's take it to the test track and just show off this stupid thing. Yeah, I can do a quarter mile in less than ten seconds. And this is basically supposed to be something that'll keep up with the. Uh, Bugatti Veyron and stuff. It's a 14.5 liter V16, turbocharged. It'll spin crazy RPMs also. I want to think, I can't remember. Oh no, it's only 6,500 RPM. But yeah, I almost hit 100 right away off the straight. hasn't even really gotten it. I don't think you can even do the top speed on this course. I think this is the fastest car I've built. And it weighs three tons. If I shave some weight off this thing, it would fly down this course. Yeah, I can't even get full top speed out of this car in this course. It's not happening. It's a race car. It's basically it's a luxury race car. So it's it's all wheel drive. Uh, unlike the Veyron, which is a whiskey a W16 engine, it's two V engines stuck together. This is just a V16. So all basically, it's my take it making a hypercar. And if you turn off traction control, you have wheel spin for days. Can I make the two minute mark? Yep, it's in the bag. 
minute 56 seconds. That was the fastest car that I've done so far. I'm sure there's other people who've done stuff that's even faster than that. Uh, considering I'm fairly new at the game, it's not too bad. Oh yeah, I can go 60 to 0 in 100 feet. I do have brake fade though, but I think that's because carbon ceramic brakes are bugged. What? Really? Did they fix it? I'm not sure if they fixed it or not. Yeah, it's it's a monster. So here's my torque curve. I can do 2,000 foot pounds of torque. <laughs> and it's huge. This is big as you can stinking make it and have it still fit in the car. I've tried bigger. It doesn't work. It's it's extreme. Uh, I built it for stroke capacity because that's where all your torque is going to come from. Which you can see from this humongous peak here. But yeah, we can go ahead and test this out and see how much boost this thing generates. About 24 PSI. Twenty-two and a half, something like that. Oh yeah, and it glows too. It's fun. This car is so much fun. I had a lot of fun making that one. It's fun to drive too. It's just stupid crazy fast. So yeah, that was my attempt at making a minivan. And then comparing that with Hell Beast. Which <laughs> Still gets 18 miles to the gallon, amazingly. <laughs> Never mind, it's an emissions. Oh, yeah, it's. It, you know, emissions? Yeah, it's like three quarters of a million dollars. This is under. Okay, so you take like a really old car, like this is a 1940s car, $6,000 versus $23,000 modernized. Ah, I did some other stuff here. I got some other cars that are dirt, 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 dirt cheap. Shiva Cheyenne truck, which I did, which is dirt cheap. I made a crap car that deliberately sucks. No one wants to buy it though. Oh, and then I have a sub one liter three banger that costs less than $10,000. That one's fun. Doesn't go very fast, but it's fun to drive. And I got a $10,000 car. You're basically little city cars. Um, not very good gas mileage. Then there's this guy. <laughs> But this thing costs a lot of money and weighs very little. This one's even less. But I had to make quality control a really big deal to make this work at all. So yeah, that was a thing. Lots of fun. I love this game. This game is like hilariously good fun to just tool around with vehicles and see what happens with things. So anyway, I think that's it for today. I'll catch you all later. We'll maybe do some stuff on BeamNG Drive, except my recording utility hates it, so I'll talk to you all later. You'll have a good day. Thanks for watching.